I'm going to work on his face just a little bit. I've got, uh, I'm going to be putting a robe on him. I'm not going to worry about the clothing and everything because the robe's going to pretty much cover everything. Um, the uh, axe will still sit on top of the uh, crook of his arm there, and that'll work out fine. The robe just adds more dramaticism to it. Um, quite honestly, if I was up in the cold north, I'd want a uh, robe around me. Time to play with some clay. I'm just getting ready to uh, edit some video from today. And I wanted to stop and uh, ask you to do something. Like, subscribe, click the bell, and make a comment in my videos. And check out my instructional DVDs, which are linked below this uh, video. All right, let's get on with today's video. And I'll show you here, if I can find them, uh, the pictures. What did I do with them? I had pictures of, uh, oh, there they are. I have pictures that I got off the web of uh, Viking clothing and robes. And you can see that they would have something to attach the robe together around her neck. And uh, it was some kind of a ring or a small decorative uh, adornment. Let's see if that's upside down. Um, but that gives you an idea of what I'm thinking of doing. But uh, anyway, I'm just, I'm trying to think of a way to, to do this sculpture without costing an arm and a leg if I do go to, to bronze. And one way to do that is by not having a lot of detail in clothing. The uh, weapon's going to already cost a little bit extra to produce. I have to constantly think of costs when I do these things. All right, let's get busy on this sculpture. I'm not going to be showing uh, a lot today because uh, I cover the creation of the robe in my instructional DVDs. Uh, one of them uh, entitled uh, Sweet, uh, The Creation of Sweetgrass. Um, I showed the technique that I made the robe here, or making the robe here in that video on making uh, her dress. Anyway, I'll uh, take a break right now and get to work on uh, the robe. First thing I'm thinking of doing is reworking his upper lip. I'm going to take the mustache off. I think I'm just going to have it with just the uh, the beard part and leave his upper lip uh, uh, clean. And that way I can get some wrinkles in the, uh, the lip and all that stuff. And it'll look a lot better, I think, in the long run. But we'll see what happens when I get there. I don't actually draw these things out. I sort of play with the clay and let the clay tell me what it's going to be. Oop, there's my timer. Well, I got the robe on, and uh, just have a few more work. I have to work out these wrinkles a little bit better. I haven't put the medallion that holds the robe together yet, and uh, I call it a robe. It's actually a blanket. If you're out there in the uh, cold of the north wind, you're going to want something to protect you from all the cold wind that you're standing in. And there's nothing better than a good wool coat. I put the axe uh, handle in just to sculpt around it so that I can take it out. I gotta make the uh, axe head and I'll 
do that next time maybe I don't know depends on how I feel that day ah <sighs> this is uh taking me all after friggin noon to do but I'm happy with what's going on I'm going to try something with the hair. It's not sure what I'm going to do yet. Got to even out the uh, flow of the uh, wrinkles. blanket. The best way to do that is with a wire tool. What this uh, robe does, it adds a little more dramaticism to the uh, clay and the, you know, eventually the bronze. Um, it also eliminates the te technical part of making a mold of craggy hands. If you can do it in a way that doesn't uh, affect the design but improves it, um, I think it's good. But boy, you, you start doing wrinkly old hands and you're going to have to uh, make a separate mold of those hands. Or figure out a way of doing it so they can make a mold of it. I'm putting texture in the clay right now only because I want to add some more texture to it. Some uh, kind of haphazard texture into it. Just to give it a more sculptural quality. Still adding texture to it. I've gone through almost 10 pounds of clay on this thing, by the way. I really wish they wore horns because it would make it so dramatic. <laughs> but they didn't. Do you notice I'm not going in straight lines, I'm doing curved texture. Trying to go with the uh, flow of the uh, material. Whew. Another reason to do the robe is you get into the belt and you get into the sword, you get into all that other stuff, and you start getting in real heavy duty costs of reproducing the belt, the buckle, the undercuts, the sword, all that stuff. And it gets expensive when you cast. I'm thinking about redoing the helmet. I, I'm happy with this one, but I think I can do better. And uh, we'll just wait until tomorrow or next time uh, when I work on this. I'm going to work on a face a little bit more too. But I'm happy the way it's going, and I'm glad I put the robe on. I think it adds a lot to the uh, dramatic look of the piece. You can't really see down in here, so I'm going to make this more of a sculptural area. All right, uh, I've taken the uh, helmet off and the rest of his hair. Um, I just want to work on that 
head a little bit next time or whatever and uh, I've got the uh, clay a block a half a block of the clay sitting underneath the light right now softening up for tomorrow uh, I'm not going to cut it up because I want to do something to make hair from it and I'll I'm going to be doing a little experiment with that all right everybody till next time have a great night give me a thumbs up and share my video and then check out my instructional dvds uh the link down below this video all right see you next time